Can you remember the last time you were looking through TikTok and then suddenly you came across a certain song and as you listen to it, you're thinking to yourself, oh gosh, that's just awful, you hate it. And yet, as the weeks go by, you keep coming across this song and before you know it, you're suddenly blasting it endlessly on Spotify as you're driving through the city, getting by with your day and you absolutely love it. Now, what is going on? Are you just an incredibly indecisive person? Well, actually, no. Much more than that, you're actually being brainwashed. In fact, it isn't just you. A fMRI study done in 2011 actually showed that when we listen to songs over and over again, it activates parts of our brain, especially the rewards parts of our brain, and engages us in a very deep way. And in fact, in this study, it was shown that when we listen to songs repetitively, it activates more parts of the brain than if we were to listen to an unfamiliar song that might be more suited to our taste. Now, if you think about it, that is very much very similar to Stockholm Syndrome coined by criminologist Bill Spedrot. And in that criminological concept, it was discovered that victims that were taken hostage by perpetrators end up developing sympathy and sometimes even adoration for their kidnappers. And if you think about it, the same thing is happening with us. We listen to songs that we are so sure we don't like, yet after being repetitively blasted with the same songs over and over again as it keeps appearing on our feed, suddenly we love them. Now what exactly is going on? Well, this Stockholm Syndrome, as it applies to music, has a special name. It's the theory of the mere exposure effect. In the 1960s, researcher Robert Zajonk discovered that when we listen to a certain song over and over again, we actually start to like those songs. And the reason why this is happening is actually based in our cognitive function. You see, we have a fluidity in our cognitive capabilities where we naturally have a bias and also an inclination to try and identify and comprehend comprehend the world around us, also as it applies to culture. So for example, when you listen to a certain song for the first time, it might be totally unfamiliar to you, you might hate it, the lyrics might be totally unrelatable, the music style might not even be your preference. But then as you suddenly hear it the second time, on a cognitive level, you start to think to yourself, oh, I've heard that before, and you try to identify perhaps the lyrics, or maybe even the musical composition itself. And it becomes almost like a game. Subsequently, you hear it again, and you try to identify even more, and you feel good that you actually know the song, that you can comprehend it, because we're always trying to make sense of the world, aren't we? And before you know it, every time the song comes on, you are trying to relate to it and exercise this cognitive function. And you almost develop a liking in exercising this function because it shows how capable you are. And of course, many of you might know what I mean when you are in a car with your friends or perhaps at a music establishment, at a bar or at a club, and a certain song comes on, you try and sing it prospectively. Try to let them know that you know the lyrics. And it can be very fun. And it is indeed this aspect of our cognitive function that we often mistake towards us liking the song itself. Just because we like identifying the songs, before we know it, we start to think perhaps we actually like the songs themselves. And it is the mere exposure of the song over many iterative times that really establishes the song in your mind. And before you know it, you suddenly love that song. You love it when it comes on because it appeals to that part of you that searches for meaning and certainty in comprehending the world around you. And that's what we all want after all. And not many of us realize that we confuse that part with our actual music preferences. And yet it is very, very effective. But beyond the fluidity of our cognitive function, there's also the aspect of context. It is also about when and where these songs are played. If these songs are being played in contexts that we associate with positive experiences, then these songs become ingrained in our mind. For example, if a popular song is constantly being played, the chances are it is more likely that it's also being played in many moments of your life that are also quite positive. For example, the song might be played at your friend's birthday party, at an outing with your friends, perhaps on the car ride to somewhere and the song is playing and you guys are singing along. Perhaps the song is being played in accordance to a TikTok trend that you really like or being associated with certain messages that are being promoted by TikTok creators. And suddenly it doesn't even matter whether we like these songs themselves because we have associated these songs with happy things, with things that are very emotionally impactful. And the same can be said also with perhaps some more sadder moments in our lives and where perhaps we're going through something very difficult and the song 
song comes on. And it just really affects us so much more as well in that way. And so context also builds meaning and context also builds attachment to these songs. And the probability of it being played in the right context is also increased when it's being played repetitively. Now at this point you might be wondering, now where is this going? You may understand the mere exposure theory. You may agree that context is very important. But what is the relevance of that? And that relevance really comes down to popularity. Now let me explain. In the 1960s all the way to the 1980s, there was a phenomenon known as payola, where especially the music industry in the United States was actually being controlled by the mob, the mafia, and they would actually pay radio stations a lot of money to try and play the songs on the radio as often as possible. Because although they did not know the reasons why, it was also clear that if the songs are being repetitively played on the radio, they tend to start trending and people tend to start liking these songs. Now of course today we live in 21st century, but not much has changed. The same thing is happening, especially to many of you who listen to the radio, perhaps when you're driving. You may listen to a song for the first time and it might not really mean a thing to you, but after many times of listening to it on your daily drive to work or wherever, suddenly it's just on your Spotify list and you're playing it perhaps even at home. But it all comes down to popularity, which is actually being controlled by a lot of producers and also music promoters. Although not as blatant today, they are still very much lobbying in terms of financially radio stations, music channels, and all these other places to play certain songs. And indeed, many of the biggest music labels, they've got all the money to do that. And so when you look at the music scene today, it is very much being dominated still by the same sort of dynamics. When we listen to mainstream music, it's always the big names. And it almost doesn't really matter whether their songs are good or whether they relate to our own personal preferences, because with enough listens, we all grow to love them. And even beyond the traditional landscape of radio and traditional channels, of course today we've got TikTok, which although is sort of disrupting the landscape in a way, because we discover perhaps more independent musicians, but it also has a sort of reinforcing effect where a certain artist goes viral and then all of a sudden we are just also sucked in to that song and that artist. Now this goes to show that today the music industry and the music channel is not so much about talent but more so about how technology and the music industry and also music distribution actually exploits, whether you think intentionally or unintentionally, the cognitive quirks that we have as human beings. And that perhaps us liking a song is not so much about whether it is actually good, but how effectively it brainwashes us by being repetitively played. And so the next time when you listen to something on TikTok and suddenly you find yourself discovering your favorite song weeks later, perhaps ask yourself how much free will do you actually have?